Hello and welcome back. If you have seen our previous videos, you might have understood that we were disabling AQE. The reason for disabling AQE was to understand how Spark behaves without AQE, which is Adaptive Query Execution. Today we will enable AQE and we will understand what are the benefits of AQE. We will see the impact of AQE in SKU joints, sortment joints and broadcast joints. We will understand how coalescing post shuffle partitions are done in AQE. Now, if you watch today's session, you will understand when we enable AQE, how it will be a different execution than what we were doing previously and how this will optimize your jobs. And this is the main reason why I disabled AQE in previous sessions. So to make you understand how AQE changes your job and how this out of the box feature from Spark helps you to optimize your jobs. So without any further delay, let's begin. Now, this is the Spark documentation for adaptive query execution. Now, I have specifically opened the documentation for the version that we are working on, 3.3.0, okay? AQE is available from Spark 3.0. There were some major features of AQE that were added from Spark 3.0, which are coalescing post shuffle partitions, converting the sort merge joins, and the skew joins optimization. Again, AQE has a very good optimization while working with Spark SQL. It makes uses of the runtime statistics to choose the most efficient execution plan. And this is where AQE dominates in lot of optimization techniques. Now, this AQE feature for Spark SQL is available from 3.2.0. But some other features that we were discussing were already available from 3.0. So now you know what AQE provides us. And we will see all of them one by one. I am in my JupyterLab environment. As usual, we'll start by generating our Spark session. So for today's session, again, I have set the max executor course to four and the total number of course available for this execution is eight. This will help us to generate two executors with four cores each. And the memory setting is closed at 512 MB per executor. Let me run and generate the Spark session first. Awesome, my Spark session is generated. Let me go ahead and refresh the Spark UI. Okay, my Spark UI is up and running. Let me go to the executors tab. Nice, I have two executors zero and one with four cores each. Nice, let me go back. Now, before we can see how AQE behaves, let's understand what happens when we disable AQE and broadcast join. We have been seeing this from our previous sessions, but we will specifically see this again today. So to disable AQE, we need to set spark.sql.adaptive.enabled as false. Now, the default value for this is true. So by default, AQE is enabled. Now, we will specifically set it to false for disabling it. Again, AQE also provides us with coalesce partition enabled. We'll also set this as false. We'll see what this is next. But before that, let me set this to false. Again, I've set the auto broadcast join threshold to minus one. This will make sure that Spark does not run automatic broadcast joins on smaller data sets. So let me run this. Great, our AQ is disabled. Now, we will be using that same employee record skewed CSV file that we were using in our previous session. Now, what this will do is this will create a skewed data set and then we will join it with department data so that we can see the skew and the spillage happening. Now, let me run this. Great, our employee data frame and department data frame is ready. Now, we will be joining both the data set based on department ID and the join would be on the left outer side. So, let me run this. Great, now our join is done. Now, if you have seen our previous video for skewness and spillage, you might be knowing what will be happening next when I run this join statement, right? So before that, let me show you the explain plan. So I'll run this. Awesome. Since we have disabled the broadcast join, we are going through the sort merge join. You can see file scans are being done. Then there's an exchange step. Then it says there is a sort step. And last, it is doing the sort merge join, right? So let me run this join. So for that, I'll use the format as no op and we will overwrite the data. So let me run this. Great. Our joining has complete. Let me go to the Spark UI. Let's go to the data frame tab. If I expand this, save, you can see the DAG. Now, if you see, we have exchange, sort, and then sort merge join. So this has taken a step of sort merge join. Now, let me go back and show you the job. If I go down and expand the third stage, you can see we have a spillage here. You can see 137 MB has been spilled to memory and that has been written to disk in 77.2 MB. Now, that spillage is happening here because we have a skewed data. Correct? So this is what we have seen in our previous session as well. Let me go back and show you the stage again. So if I go back and show you the third stage, you can see there are 200 shuffle partition tasks are created. And we know that spark.sql shuffle partition is by default 200. Okay, so when we disable AQE, Spark is taking the default setting of 200 and it is creating 200 shuffle partitions. And we know not all of them are being used to read the data, right? So if we expand and if we scroll down to the task, you can see majority of them are empty. Okay, so if I descend this as per the shuffle record, so you can see only 10 of the tasks are doing the job, rest all have done nothing. Okay, 
So this is where we see a lot of degradation. First, we can see a lot of shuffle partitions, which is useless. And the second one is there is a skewed data, which is creating a spillage in memory. Okay, now that we have seen the job performance without AQE, let's enable our AQE and see what are the optimizations that Spark take care of when we enable the adaptive query execution. So let me scroll and we are going to see two of them together. The first one is coalescing post shuffle. It implies, if you remember, there were 200 shuffle tasks that were being created because of the default value. Now, in order to reduce that shuffle partitions value, we had to set it manually. Now, if you enable AQE, Spark will take care of that. All the unnecessary shuffle partitions would be removed and Spark will create only required number of post shuffle partitions. Okay, so whatever unnecessary partitions were being created will not be created. Okay, other one we are going to see is skewed join optimization. Now, in our data set, we have seen because of a bigger size of partition, the data is being getting spilled because the task memory size is lesser than this because we are using a smaller cluster the memory size for each task is also less and this is why if that exceeds the task memory size it is getting spilled right so aqe will automatically take care of it it does two things first it will join smaller partitions if you have many smaller partition size post shuffle it will join those to create a medium or a balanced size partition Second, it will break the bigger partitions. Now, in our case, that is the problem. We have bigger partition size, so it will split it out. Okay, so to do that, first we have to enable AQE. Now, to enable AQE, you have to set Spark SQL Adaptive enabled as true. Now, this is by default true in Spark 3.0. Now, since we had disabled it previously, let me enable it, setting it as true. Okay, the next one is coalesce partition enabled as true. Again, this is by default enabled as true in Spark 3.0, but since we have disabled it in the beginning, I'll make it mark it as true again. So let me run this. Great. Now, there are two more configurations that we will do today for our job. Now, the first one is advisory partition size in bytes. Now, this is the partition size that Spark will create by default post shuffle. Okay, so the default size that has been set for Spark is 64 MB. But since we are using a smaller cluster and the task memory is less, we will set it to 8 MB. Okay, the other one is skew join threshold in bytes. Now, this is because we will ask that if the size of the partition exceeds 10 MB, we will consider it as a skew partition. So, adaptive query engine will know any partition size exceeding 10 MB will be a skewed partition. So, it has to split it into multiple partition. Okay. Again, the default value is 256 MB. Now, this two setting, I'm doing it only specifically for the job that we are going to optimize now. In your production scenario, there can be different jobs. So, you have to see the size of each task and then decide the value. In many of the cases, you don't need to touch this value. So, be very careful before you adjust the value for these two particular configurations. Okay, so let me run this. Now, once I have enabled the AQE, let me go back and rerun the joins. So, this is the join, and now we will write the data in no op again. So, let me rerun this. Awesome, it completed so quick. Let me go to the data frame tab now. Nice, if you see, this job completed within two seconds. Okay, so let me expand the third job. If I scroll down, you can see it has taken only 17 shuffle partitions now because Spark has coalesced unnecessary shuffle partition post shuffle. Okay, so if I expand this, let me scroll down, you can see there is no skewed data here. Okay, there is no spillage happening, there is no skewed data. Spark has automatically taken care and created 17 post shuffle partitions to take care of the data skewness. Okay, so this is how the skewness has automatically been taken care by Adaptive Query Engine. Now, if you remember our previous session, we had to go through a process called salting in order to fix it, right? Now, in 3.0 Spark, if you have enabled AQE and set up your partition size properly, Spark will automatically take care of the spillage and skewness. You don't have to go ahead and do the salting technique. So, this is one of the benefits that AQE offers. Now, we have seen how the coalesce post shuffle partition and the skew joint optimization happen, okay? Now, the next one is sort merge joint. Now, if we see the third job that executed, you can see the DAG, it is still happening sort much join because we have specifically disabled the broadcast join, right? Let's enable the broadcast join. Okay, so I'll enable the broadcast join providing the size that is required for the broadcast join, which is 10 MB. So let me enable this. Okay, this is done. Now we will again run this join, but if you see, I'll not specify any broadcasting here. If you remember our optimization for joins, we had to specify broadcast for department in order to do it if we are not using AQE. But with AQE, you don't need to specify any broadcast. Broadcasting will be taken care by AQE itself. 
it will check which one is a smaller data set and it will automatically optimize your joins. So let me run the join again. I have not specified any broadcast. Okay. So let me rewrite the data. So I'll rerun. Great. It completed so quick. Let me go back and refresh the data frame tab. Nice. Again, you can see it completed within two seconds. Let me go and show you the DAG. Awesome. Now, if you see, AQE is automatically determined that the department is a smaller data set and it has to broadcast the data and the broadcast join has happened. Okay, so this has been done by AQE automatically. You do not have to specify broadcast here for department. AQE has taken care of the broadcasting and this is one of the major optimization that AQE provides. If you enable AQE, AQE will automatically take care of the broadcasting. Now, in our previous session, we disabled AQE in order to show you how to do it manually. But if you enable AQE in Spark 3.0, a smaller data set would automatically broadcast it and your join will happen so quick. So if I go to the jobs, you will not see any shuffle step because broadcasting does not do shuffle, right? The first step will broadcast the data and the second job will join the data. So let me expand this. You can see the joining happening here. Okay, there is no shuffle step because this is a broadcast join. Now, we have seen how AQE optimizes our job when enabled. Now. There are certain more features that AQE provide. You can go ahead and see this documentation to find out all the configurations that you can do along with AQE. I hope you understood how AQE optimizes unnecessary shuffle partitions by coalescing them, how it takes care of skewed partitions, and also how it converts a sort merge join into broadcast join automatically. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. Share this within your network for maximum reach. In our next session, we are going to see Spark SQL. Till then, keep learning, keep growing, keep sharing.